Uh, will Diablo Immortal grow your channel? Is it gonna grow your live stream? We're taking a look at all of the data about this game in today's episode. So by the end of this episode, you're going to know if this is a game you need to focus on in order to get where you need to go and reach your goals as a creator. Let's go. Sponsored by Restream. Why live stream to one platform when you can simultaneously live stream to every platform to discover new audiences faster using Restream.io. Go. Guys, we're going to take a look at the numbers of Diablo Immortal, and I want to get up to speed with this game. I think, while well, you might be a little bit more up to speed, but I put, bring, brought up Google Trends first to see. Of course, we've got a flat line right away. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of interest in this pre-launch. We don't have a release date, right? We don't even know like what's going on with the game development cycle. In fact, there's been some rumors that it's canceled. Do you know anything about that one, AWOL? Uh, let's just call it, let's put it in the speculation category. I mean, they okay. haven't been talking about it much. And obviously with the terrible reception of the game at BlizzCon last year or two years ago, was it last year or two years ago? Doesn't matter. Oh, both. Yeah. Both. Both. Uh, they obviously don't want to show anything with the game. They don't want to show more gameplay. They don't want to do any more marketing. I'm assuming until the game is perfect. But because of their silence on this mega title, essentially, uh, people are speculating that the game was canceled and that they've moved on to other projects. I think it's unlikely that Diablo Immortal is canceled because Diablo's strategy now, of course, is making mobile games. They said that they're making multiple mobile games for every single franchise at Blizzard, and Diablo Immortal is supposed to be that crown jewel game that can show what Blizzard can do. They've never made a mobile game before. Hearthstone doesn't count. That's a port of a PC game over to mobile. So this is the first one that's gonna show investors, executives, and the whole company what they are all about. So they can't botch this one. So I think they're being silent just to be careful. But look, it's possible they'll cancel it because of the terrible reception in the first place. It's possible, but I think that's unlikely. So let's talk about the prospects of actually growing with this game. I see you have some gameplay here where you have the uh, gameplay uh, trailer itself. What was your impression, guys, when the gameplay was shown outside of the controversy from BlizzCon and what have you? What was people's online impression of the gameplay? Do you think there's going to be the excitement required uh, in order to get people excited and watching your videos and your live streams with this title? I think the game looks great, especially for a mobile game. I mean, it and, you know, the gameplay is going to be action packed. It looks like it is at least from the footage they've shown and Blizzard is showing actual gameplay. This isn't like random trailer stuff. The game looks like it's going to be fun, and it's Diablo, so it's going to bring Diablo fans, despite the controversy. In fact, I think the controversy only helps sell it a little bit more because it gives it more name recognition and makes it more of a trend. So if they have any other large trends before this thing launches, it's only going to make it bigger. We know for a fact that there is a huge sect of creators that follow Blizzard titles quite successfully. So this is another one of those titles that yeah if you followed it look very much likely you could be successful and this, when i say follow it this means build content pre-launch be there for launch and then ride it out post-launch as well and normally you can do well the problem with doing that with blizzard games is normally you have a lot of competition because there's a lot of other creators who know this they follow blizzard to a t and they do the same thing however because diablo immortal is a mobile game i don't think you're going to have nearly as many creators caring about it at all. Most of your normal PC gamer creators aren't going to care about Diablo Immortal as a mobile game. They're not going to care. That's why they hate it. It's a mobile game, right? This is an opportunity where a lot of your competition is going to be cut out, where you might be able to jump in, use the Blizzard wave, so to speak. And when I say that, I'm talking about Google Trends. Whenever Blizzard launches a game, let's take a look at Diablo 3, maybe we can go look back historically. Whenever Blizzard launches a game, there's a huge spike, and you want to be a part of that spike. Yeah, and if you go back five years, yeah, 2004, you'll see that mega Diablo 3 spike. There it is. And we covered yeah. Diablo. We actually had a TGN Diablo channel that was one of the first channels at uh, as a part of our network that we used to run. 
And we capitalized on that trend. We got a couple videos for Diablo 3 that had over a million views. And we did quite well with that one. We even streamed it. And that is the mega spike, yep, as you see there. And those little mini spikes after that, Perrin, I believe those were DLCs and announcements of content that came out in the future thereafter. And so what we can hope for Diablo Immortal is that it's going to follow a similar trend cycle where you've got the mega launch spike where they drop a couple, you know, 10, 20 million dollars into marketing at the beginning. And then as they drop major patches in the future, you get those mini spikes and you can capitalize on that as a creator. So the question is, are they going to follow a similar marketing schedule and a similar marketing trend as they have with their triple A console game PC games in the past? Because mobile games are all about constant updates, regular updates, not big DLCs you're going to pay money for. I mean, they are going to pack this game full of so many microtransactions, it's going to make your head spin. So the question is, are they going to withhold, Ross, what do you think? Do you think they're going to withhold content for mega patches to build a big exciting launch for the next big patch? Or do you think that they are going to just kind of trickle it out over time, do like a season-based thing essentially, and then just get maximum microtransactions from things like season passes and selling you, you know, $25 skins, et cetera? Yeah, I think the clear answer is probably going to be option B. I'm going to go with B as my final answer. It just seems like uh, th this is the trend with mobile games. It doesn't matter if it's Blizzard. It doesn't matter what studio is going in and working on developing or publishing mobile games. This is the business format for it. So I can ex I expect this is uh, going to be exactly what we're going to see, like almost to a T, what you just said. Wouldn't surprise me at all if that's actually what happened here. And uh, just to reiterate what Perrin said, do not care about the people, the console gamers and everything who are hating on Diablo Immortal because I think there's actually a legitimate argument to be made, and I could be very wrong and really embarrass myself here, that Diablo Immortal, if everything comes and every, everything releases as we see right now, with you know no flaws or anything, I think there's an opportunity that Diablo Immortal could pro maybe even able to grow your channel more than what Diablo 4 could. Yeah, that's a really good point. And you, we have to ask ourselves, and the stream just went down, but it went right back up. And that was Restream that it disconnected from. So what we have to ask ourselves is, does this game fit all of the criteria of a game that grows YouTube channels? Uh, so the things I'm always looking for, number one, you want it to be multiplayer. This game is going to be multiplayer. You'll be able to play with your friends. You're going to be able to do co-op and what have you, and you'll be able to collaborate on some level. However, I think that's going to be limited in the amount that you can co-op with people versus PC. We still haven't had complete confirmation on that. Number two, you want a multi-million dollar marketing budget. This game has the multi-million dollar marketing budget, so we're in really good shape there. Check. That's awesome. Number three, you're going to want regular patch and updates. We got regular patch and updates. That's really, really nice. And number four, you're going to want it to be moddable. It's definitely not going to be moddable. So I think it's going to fit three out of the four criteria that you need it to be a viable game uh, to cover. And so I think you're going to be in pretty good shape there for that reason. Uh, th so the question is, will it be a mega trend? Will it be one of these gigantic games like Mobile Legends and like Garana Free Fire and like uh, you know, the different Supercell games like Brawl Stars and Clash of Clans, will it ever reach that level or will it just stay as a small niche mobile game? Because so many games kind of fall into that category, Perrin, where, you know, they're popular as quote unquote mobile games, if you will. But then when you look at translating that into audience on Facebook gaming, audience on Twitch, audience on YouTube, it doesn't translate. You just got a lot of downloads essentially for the game and you've got an active player base for the game, but there's no audience for the game. And most of the time that you see that occurring is when the company doesn't do number one, proper community management for the game. And number two, they don't uh, do influencer marketing. And number three, they don't uh, really support the multiplayer elements of the game as much. And there's not PvP in the game, and there's not really that much to talk about outside of just completing PvE content over and over again. And so, what are your thoughts on that, Perrin? You play PvP mobile games like Mobile Legends that are huge, and it's growing you as a streamer. Do you think if they keep this game mostly PvE and just clearing dungeons, is there enough meat on the bone to make a lot of content about this? I think if you can... As long as you can join and play with other players, even if it's to join with PVE content, they'll be fine. 
You just need to be able to play with other players. And that's, that's the requirement. They also need to pay very close attention to their international community because that is going to be their target audience for this. It's not going to be, and, and this is why we saw, you know, in their presentation, what, what was it? Two years ago, do you guys not have phones? You know, the meme that the situation shows the disparity between the current audience of blizzard, which is PC gamers and primarily North America, uh, versus the audience that they're trying to go for, which is not that it's international. It's the East Asian, you know, Island territories. It's the Philippines, it's Indonesia, it's Malaysia. It's, um, a lot more of an Asian market, generally speaking, and a lot more of an international market and not the current North American PC gamer market. They're clearly going after that market, but they haven't really done so successfully outside of bridging world of Warcraft over there, which I don't think they had to try very hard because there was just a huge demand for that game regardless. So this is the first time that they have a new game that they're going to market to a brand new demographic. And so we don't know how it's going to go, but if they do at least a half decent job and the international community picks this up, the reason they're going to pick it up is because they can play together on their phones. That's going to be the number one reason why they, they want it. And because there will be no other game like this with this kind of quality. So that's, that's the question mark. I think that more than likely Blizzard will succeed at this. Blizzard is very good still at doing quality. And that's also going to be a factor here for the international community, quality and online playing together. So if they nail those two, this will be big, but not necessarily in North America. It's going to have an international audience that's going to be, have a demand for it. We have to talk about launch date and the lack of launch date right now. So Pit Boss Pat was asking in chat, what about launch? When is this thing happening? Oh, uh, we don't know, unfortunately. Uh, people were speculating that it would be in 2020, end of year 2020. Nothing. Uh, in terms of it being 2021, who knows? I mean, Blizzard doesn't launch games anymore. They don't, they don't even, I don't even know if they make video games anymore. Who knows? I mean, they said that they're working on Diablo 4. That's cool. We saw some gameplay on that. Uh, no games came out this year. Uh, who knows? I, is Blizzard still in the video game industry? Uh, I think it's seriously concerning. <laughs> yes. It's, uh, do they not make, do they not have phones? Do they not have games? Uh, so they're not going to release a game this year unless there's going to be some sort of surprise launch of Diablo Immortal. Um, at BlizzCon, they're not going to surprise launch that. Yeah. I don't think. I mean, maybe they do. I, I think. I think the, personally, if I was if I was on their team and I was advising them, I would tell them to do no hype for the game at this point because the hype obviously completely fell flat on its face, and it didn't work out at all. And so, what I recommend to them is just launch the game. Like, don't tell anyone you're going to launch it. Just release it. And if they were going to do it this year, they should do it at BlizzCon, and they should say, "Hey, Diablo Immortals out." Here, we've got uh, 30, you know, we've got 20 minutes of extended gameplay for you to watch. If they're proud of their product, they will show 20 minutes of extended gameplay during the open ceremony. Be like, here, here's the gameplay, check it out. And then it plays the gameplay, what have you. And then they say, cool, uh, it's launched right now. Everybody can download it on their phones. I hope you enjoy it. And for everybody here at BlizzCon, uh, go ahead and uh, go over to our Diablo Immortal PlayStations or whatever over here and play the game. And uh, everybody here is at BlizzCon gets some kind of bonus. Enjoy. And then that's it. That's how you launch this game. You don't hype it. You don't do more trailers. You don't build more anticipation. You don't do more lead ups and more interviews because every interview, every press coverage, every bit of uh, pre launch coverage you get will all be in reference to your failure at the announcement. They'll say, they showed us this gameplay. Will this be enough to save the game after their failed announcement? They'll be like, you know, they do some sort of marketing campaign. Is this marketing campaign actually going to work when everybody, the fail, blah, blah, blah. It's going to all be in reference to the previous failure. So I think they just need to launch the game. Don't talk about it at all. Just release it. Say, download it if you want to play it. Thanks. Have a nice day. And then they start running the ads and that's end of story for Diablo Immortal. So that would be the smart strategy, in my opinion, uh, for this game, which is not what necessarily what a content creator wants. A content creator wants the hype cycle. They want a target launch date. They want to do a launch live stream on their channel. They want to cover all the guides and everything and know when it's coming out. But I'm not sure if that's going to be the case for this particular game. What do you guys think? I think Diablo is too big of a title where you can't just release it like that. I think there's going to be, there's too much money attached on it. And there's going to be too much writing on this for them to just 
release it. And while that, while that makes sense, while I'm sure there's a situation where they could very easily do this, this kind of all stems back to, I believe, 2018 at BlizzCon when, uh, when it was essentially, they were hyping up that all these new games were going to be announced and stuff like that. So naturally everybody thinks Diablo four, it was even hinted that a new Diablo game was going to come. That's kind of where the disappointment kind of started because everyone thought, Oh, we're getting big Diablo four announcements. And here's a Diablo uh, mobile game, which kind of threw people off. That was, a, that was their biggest mistake. I think moving forward, if they do a marketing strategy for this, and they uh, actually said, like, here's a release date. Here's what we're going to do with it. They just need to be very clear that the stuff they're putting out is for the Diablo Immortal game. If you're going to have, like, I know they're doing, like, BlizzCon line in uh, February, which is a replacement for BlizzCon, uh, this, this month's BlizzCon. Like, just make sure, don't lead people on. Just say, hey, all this right here is for Diablo Immortal, for the mobile game. Just be very clear about what you're selling and I don't think I think the amount of haters that you're going to have are, will substantially go down just because you're not tricking them. You're not fooling them. Just freaking tell them what this is what it is. I think. But in the end, I think there's just too much money to be made off the Diablo name for them to just kind of um, drop it, even though that may be their best case scenario at this point. Perrin's got the so, Echo Gaming channel up up on the screen right now. And this is the one creator. He's one of the people I coach as a creator. Uh, and he created a gaming channel just for Diablo Immortal. He's like the number one channel for this game right now, pre-launch. As you can see, I'm not. This isn't a knock on him, but he's only got about five thousand subscribers, and the videos get a couple thousand views per each, which is pretty good considering how small this trend is right now. And the reason why this trend is small is because they haven't done any marketing or any announcements or any chatter about it recently. So he's just speculating about the things we want. Here's what you play while you're waiting. Will it be pay to win? And just speculation, speculation, speculation content on this. And he's doing the pre-launch hype strategy, as you guys can see. Uh, and he's building, building a relationship with Blizzard as well along the way. The problem with this, and the problem with this title, is Blizzard is not following a similar pattern as they have with their previous games, and that most developers do uh, with their games, where they where they are just constantly hyping, 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 and giving and ramping things up as you move toward launch. But Diablo Immortal is not doing that necessarily. They're just kind of trickling things out over time. They made a big announcement, basically telling everybody almost nothing. I mean, there was a couple of trailers a couple months ago, that's, but basically telling people nothing, and that's it. Uh, so this makes it very difficult to do pre-launch hype for a game like this, as opposed to something like Cyberpunk 2077, where... You've got constant updates. You've got Night City Wire. You've got interviews. You've got screenshots coming out. You've got them, you know, actually making an effort to market the game. As opposed to Diablo Immortal, they're making virtually no effort at all uh, relative to other AAA developers to market their game pre-launch. To me, that is a major red flag for Diablo Immortal. So let's go ahead and wrap things up here, guys. People that are looking to cover Diablo Immortal, should you do it? I'd say on the range of games that could grow your YouTube channel. Uh, I would put this, uh, this is definitely a game that's eligible to grow your YouTube channel from scratch because the new upcoming game, it's multiplayer, it's gonna have a multi, it's gonna have a multi-million dollar budget and it's gonna have regular updates. It could grow your YouTube channel. However, I would put it at the lower tier in terms of games that could grow your YouTube channel simply because number one, Blizzard is, is botching everything they touch right now. Uh, so it's possible they could botch this game as well. And they could botch the marketing for this game. They haven't done a competent marketing game, uh, campaign for a game since Overwatch. Heroes of the Storm marketing was completely botched. Uh, you could look at uh, Warcraft 3 was completely botched. Uh, and obviously the marketing for this game has been completely botched so far. So can, does Blizzard even know how to market a game effectively anymore? We don't even know. Uh, so that's a huge question mark. And so that's the number one question with this game. Is the game going to be marketed effectively? I would say it's more likely than not that they will not market this game effectively. And so that makes it a risky title for creators to make content around. However, with great risk can come great reward. And so people like Echo are banking on that, you know, it'd be coin flip that this game ends up working out. And if it does, he's positioning himself in such a way where he can capitalize on the trend going up and maybe be the number one channel for it. So people watching, do you want to be the number two, number three channel for this? It could be lucrative. What do you guys think in terms of prospects? In terms of an upcoming game, 
and being able to grow from it out of eligible games that you could grow from, I would give this a three out of 10. It's definitely a high on the risk factor. Um, probably too high for something for me to gamble on because you probably would have to spend a good, at least two years really gambling on this. And you, there's not a great chance that it's going to pay off. There are better options out there that are not as risky to grow your channel. However, there's a large reward at, at stake here. So if you really, if you want to try your gambling luck, and I definitely say it's a gambling one for sure, it could blow up and be huge without the marketing at all. They could totally botch the marketing, but the game could be great and it catches on like wildfire internationally and it gets played and downloaded a ton and then it gets a huge audience for it and a huge search demand for videos. But all the other factors said right now, I don't think you need to cover it right now. Like if that happens and it begins to blow up like that internationally, you will have time as long as you're watching it and watching the trends, you know, Google trends, watching what's going on. You would have time to jump into it then. Will you be number one? No, but you will be able to still grow. So I would say in terms of now looking at this as a trend, no, I would not cover this now. I would wait and bide my time, maybe play other mobile games and use other mobile games to grow your channel and then keep a close eye on this, watch it as it comes out and be ready to pounce on it if it's going to blow up so you can get in early. and But you don't have to be in this early. I think being in this early is too much of a risk. Ross, what do you think? Yeah. Um, everything about this game points to it. If it's everything is perfect, if Blizzard does their job, I think this is going to be a great game to grow your channel. However, saying if Blizzard gets this right, like AWOL's pointed out, that has not been the case recently. So I'm going to, I'll give it a four out of 10. And that's only because the name Diablo is in the title. But my only, my suggestion would be because we still don't know what the hell is going on with this game. All we know is they've released a trailer and they have a website. That's essentially all we know. They're doing this BlizzCon line thing in February, February 19th and 20th of 2021. Wait and see until then. I wouldn't make that decision until I saw what was announced about this game at that event and then reevaluated it then. And if nothing is announced about that game at BlizzCon Line, then I would move on because then I have a real fear that the game's not even going to release. Yeah, I'm predicting that they are not going to say they're going to release like one gameplay trailer and or two and be like, here you go. And we're going to do a dev interview. And that's it. Uh, I think no, that they're going to do, no. I, I think that they're just going to ulti- just super botch it and just like be like, I don't know, maybe the game's coming out in 2021. I don't, I don't know, who cares? I think it's going to be something like that. Uh, so either that or they're going to just release it. If they release it outright at this BlizzCon, then the my score goes from a three to like an eight. Then we know Blizzard has people in their company that know what they're doing. Uh, but uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. So really quick. If you want to restream to every single platform there is on planet Earth, do it using Restream.io. Ross, put that link in the chat. We give a 30% off discount code now. Drop 30 is the discount code. 30% off your first month. You can stream on DLive, Trovo, Periscope, YouTube, Facebook Gaming, Twitch. I've heard Twitch is a streaming platform that people like. Hey, why not do that? And you can use our link to help give us credit for you using Restream. It's the fastest way to grow as a streamer. We use it every single day. We recommend you do too. Good luck, everybody. We're going to do more videos like this, covering upcoming games and letting you know what we think, whether it's viable for you to grow your YouTube channel and your live stream to help you figure out just by spending 20 to 30 minutes with us, figure out whether dropping hundreds of hours of your own time into a game is worth it. Hopefully, we're going to save you time and help you get opportunities. Adios, amigos. Keep creating.